If you're looking for all the answers, I don't have them. But what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who misrepresent or misinform the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. I won't pursue you. But if you do, I will find you. And I will expose you. <sighs> I don't know. You think there's any casting agents looking for a 50-something-year-old retired DA agent? Give them my number. Kidding. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. I am glad you're here, and today we're going to cover something very important. Got a lot of questions over the past three weeks after I did my strategy on um, first-year rookie cards and their silvers and went to target them. About like, hey, we got them, but how do we sell them? A lot of new people out there, so I figured why not give an instructional video of a cards from cradle to the grave. By the time you get the cards in, either back from PSA, which we would hope that would be the case, or if you ordered, ordered them and you want to sell them, this is what you need to know. We're going to go through photography. We're going to go through listing them on eBay. And then, most importantly, in my opinion, we're going to learn about shipping them off properly. But, a lot of stuff to cover. It's all good stuff. It's strategies. It's hints. It's giving you, going to give you a tactical advantage that I've learned over the years. Stuff that I've applied and has paid off to me. So with that, let's get started. Hi guys, welcome back. As you can see, we are in the studio of the Sports Card Investigator, where I am going to show you exactly how to take a photo of your card. Now, as you can see, it's a graded card, and I'm going to use the graded card as my subject because that is what I sell. You can apply this method to raw cards, not a problem. Just have to adjust the stand, but everything else would remain the same. So you're looking at a light box. Light box I bought on Amazon. It cost about $30. I'll be sure to leave the description in the YouTube notes so you guys can see which one I bought. But they're all basically the same. And I'll also leave descriptions of anything else that I describe during the video. You'll also see a PSA DNA acrylic case to display the beautiful Purple Wave Zion Williamson card. This just adds to the photo, and I think it's a good touch to have when displaying. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the Purple Wave Prism, Zion Williamson, is usually behind my right shoulder, and I've gotten a couple questions on that. I was like, hey, is there a story behind that card? And there is. Um, like most of you probably, I go to my local card shop twice a month. And when I go in there, the first question is, you got anything new or anything you think I'd like? And he said, hey, I got a Prism Blaster, was going through my stuff and found it, and if you want it, it's yours. I think he charged 40 bucks for it. Wasn't horrible, especially with the prices are going now. This was probably about two or three months ago. So I took it, brought it home, I ripped it open, and lo and behold, this beautiful card was staring at me. And at first glance, I looked at it, and I couldn't find a thing wrong with it. So I sent it to um, PSA. I think I used Express Service. Maybe even the one above that for the declared value was about, I think it was like two grand. So whatever that service level was, got it back like in 10 days as a PSA 10. And I'm keeping this guy. This guy, I think it's a beautiful card. Um, I love it. And I think it's going to stay in the personal collection of myself and my son for the rest of our lives. So you will not be seeing this card on eBay. All right, story time over. So you can see it's in the light box. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a photo. But we're not going to use this 35 millimeter camera. Nope, we are going to use simply an iPhone. An iPhone will give you beautiful pictures. I'm going to record my screen. I'm going to take you through the process and then you'll end up seeing the finished product. So with that, I am going to get in position 
take the picture, and we'll go from there. Hi guys, welcome back. We are now going to take the photo of Mr. Zion Williamson. And you can see, hopefully my phone is recording as I'm speaking over this. And you see the first thing that I did was I put the camera in portrait mode. Because why? We're taking a portrait. And that'll also give us a little bit more leeway when we do our touch-ups and edits to the photo to make it as wonderful and attractive as we possibly can. You'll also notice that I have a white background. Now, when you buy the light box, it'll come with all different kinds of background colors. White is the preferred choice of photographers. Did a lot of research. I use black. I use green. White is the one I prefer, but feel free to experiment and use whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, so you can see now we have Mr. Williamson in our site. Now, I don't have it zoomed in yet or anything like that, and there's a reason for that, because Portrait wants you a certain distance away, and if you're within eight feet, even if you're closer and it says move back a little bit, you're still good. Put your thumb over there. See, place subject within eight feet. We're still good, and we're just going to snap the picture and that is what our picture looks like and we're going to go work with that picture from there okay guys so here's our picture doesn't look like much right but we're going to turn this into a beautiful portrait of a purple prism card so we can add that on to our ebay listing so the first thing we're going to do is hit edit okay then we're going to crop the photo. And this, you know, this will, you know, I'm sure you guys are way more adept at the, oh, look how crooked that looks, but not a problem. We're going to straighten her out just like that. And then we're going to go back to cropping. Now we can always go back and adjust as necessary to make this the best possible picture. And remember, I've done this way many times where I had to go back and retake the picture, leave everything set up, however you want to do it. It's just going to take some trial and error, but I guarantee you guys are going to become professionals at this. All right, so there we go. So we're going to hit, after we have it cropped how we like it, and we can always come back to that, we're going to hit this button here, which is going to be adjusting the photo. Now what I do first is I hit auto. Now that makes it really, really pretty, right? But that's not good enough for us. Now we're going to go through the different aspects of the picture and try to make each color, each, you know, detail come alive. So then we're just going to go right down the line. We hit exposure. We're going to move that. And don't be afraid to play with this, okay? Because it's, it's important that you guys just learn the different aspects of it. So the exposure looks pretty good at about a minus eight. Then we'll go to brilliance, 55, you know, 50, obviously 50 is where the midterm is. So we're gonna go there, we're gonna see where that is. That looks pretty good, that looks pretty good right in the middle. Highlights, move that, see some of that shimmer and shine, about a minus six. Shadows, not, not really necessary with shadows keep that at zero contrast okay now we're talking so the contrast I usually move down to about 20 22 get that really vibrant again brightness the same way about 36 black point on some cards can really make it pop especially if the cards have a lot of black in them saturation that's your colors your vibrance warmth Tint I don't touch, sharpness, absolutely, definition, noise reduction. Now here's the, here's the trick, vignette. I always do a little bit of vignette because it makes it that much better, makes the picture pop, makes people take notice. Okay, so we'll go back to our cropping. 
That actually looks pretty darn good. Let's hit done and let's see what we're looking at. Now that is a beautiful picture for display. I'll be right back and we'll continue on with the eBay listing. All right, everyone. Now we're going to go through the eBay listing and I have it pre-filled and some of the most important stuff on here that I think will act as good reminders, I will actually put on the screen as we're talking so you guys can have that. So as you can see, we have our eBay listing on our phone. Now I do not use the computer when I do this. I just find the phone to be so much in, so much easier. Um, I have it down to a science where I do a lot of cutting and pasting because a lot of my items are the same as far as descriptions and auction times and things like that. So without delay, let's go through this together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our photo up there. And we're going to go from the photo library and we're just going to pick the guy that we just took. And there he is. Beautiful picture. Hit done. And now we're going to go through each thing. I know that you guys got this down, but let me just walk everyone through it just in case there's anything that anyone ever misses. The title. You get 80 characters. I usually try to fill up as much as I can. So obviously the description of the card is paramount. 2019 Panini Prism Zion Williamson Purple Wave Rookie Card PSA Gem Mint. And then what we can also do is we can put the card number 248. So there's five left. So we could put card... Nope, we can't even do that. So we're going to leave it like that. 2019 Panini Prism Zion Williamson Purple Wave Rookie Card PSA 10 Gem Mint. Item specifics. This is very important. I don't know how many times I've gone through and people just do not put in the item specifics. And that's important, guys. Put in as much information as you possibly can. So obviously, player, Zion Williamson. And when you go in here, you just self-populate all of those items. Card attributes. He's a rookie. We can put other things in there too. That's totally up to you. You know, we could say it's a refractor. You know, it's not serial numbered. Is it a short print? Whatever, whatever is applying to that card, put it in. Single professional grader PSA, teams, New Orleans Pelicans. And again, you would just select. You know, I've done this to save some time, but this just lets you know the things that I put in. Basketball, the year, the season, the league. What series is the card? It's a Panini Prism. Is it autograph? No. Um, error, modern, certification number. That's very important. Put in the certification number of the card so you know um, if someone wants to check it, they can go in there and check the card to see if it is for real. And we'll actually do that because the certification in there I just looked and it's not correct. And that's why it's important that you check it out. So the actual certification number is 46493808. And then you have to hit go. If you hit done, it'll revert back to the wrong number. Card number is 248. Theme is sports. That looks pretty good. We hit done. Now let's move down to category. Sports memorabilia cards, fan shop, sports trading cards. No problem there. The description. I can't tell you how many times people just the description usually defaults from the top. That's not good enough, guys. Let's make sure you can put as much information in there as possible so people get a good idea of what they're buying. So I always start off with, you are bidding on a 2019 Zion Williamson Panini Prism Purple Wave Rookie Card. This card was evaluated by PSA and received the grade of PSA 10 Gem Mint. The card number is 248. 
see photos above. You will be receiving the card pictured. You might not think that's necessary, but some people will actually say, is that the actual card I'm getting? Yes, leave no doubt. The stand is not included. I also get also would get questions. Do you can you throw in the stand? Is the stand the stand is not included. Hey, if you want to throw the stand in, more power to you. Condition is like new, there's brand new. I always put like new because the card went from to get graded and came back, but let your conscience be your guide on that. Shipped with UP, US Postal Service first class on this card. If I were to sell it, which I am not, I would include shipping. Um, any card that I ship out that is over, say, $350, I include shipping. And that's for my protection. I do a small flat rate box with insurance, and it costs me 8 bucks. but for peace of mind, that is what I do. And when I go through the shipping process with you guys, I will show you exactly what I mean. Pricing. Now, I get a lot of questions about, you know, how the length of your auction is or pricing or best offer. Guys, this is what I do. I'm not saying you have to do this, but this is what I do. So the starting bid, 99 cents. I don't care because I know the card's not going to go for 99 cents. That's my starting bid. The duration, I do one day auctions, especially in this climate that we are in now, right? Because cards get hot and they can cool down. Players get hot and then they can get cooled down. So I try to put those players up, those cards up, that will give me the most bang for my buck in a 24 hour period. I try to get it around the time they're playing within a day. This has really um, gave me some very good results, and I just use one day. I hope that explains my thought process there. Offers. I do not allow offers. Some people say, why not? Because quite frankly, guys, on a one-day auction, it's a pain in the butt. People are offering ridiculous prices. I usually, I had one card up. It was a mosaic. Panini, uh, Panini Mosaic, Zion Williamson, Rookie Base, PSA 10. And someone said, I'll give you $200 for it right now. It wasn't even an offer, but that's just the message that I got. Nope, I'm going to let it ride out. I don't allow offers. If you want to do that, of course, that's totally up to you. This is just what I do strategically and tactically when I list things. Um, unless, of course, you get a crazy, if you would do that at offer and you get some crazy offer, then that's on you. But I'm saying for this exercise, this is what I do. I do not do a reserve price. Schedule listing start time. Okay, this is important. You don't want to have your auction start at 10 in, 10 in the morning and end the following day at 10 in the morning. There have been studies. I have looked into this. The best time to do an auction are between the hours of 7 and 10 p.m., in my opinion, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, if you're a West Coaster, that still gives you time to come back, you know, if you're coming home from work, whatever, but between the hours of 7 p.m. and 10 p.m., and if you have several items, I stagger them, 8, 8.15, 8 8.30, 9 o'clock, and so on. So I always schedule my listings for that time. Buy it now. If you want to throw a buy it now out there for some ridiculously high price, more power to you. Go ahead and do that. I just don't do that. Um, I just let the auction play out. And so far, in this climate that we're in now, I've had the best results. Shipping. Um, I always, if I'm not going to do a um, pay for it, um, a seller paid box, then I'll do U.S. Post Office first class, obviously. It's going to be in a bubble mail mailer. We'll talk about that. I always add, uh, say it's going to be four ounces. It's always going to be a little bit less, but the way I package, I want to make sure I have a little bit of leeway. I do not ship internationally, and I do not offer local pickup. That is up to you. And then basically, I always preview my auction first. 
go through it, make sure everything looks great, and then I list it with fees. Now I know with the with the um, auction of 24 hours, you're going to be paying that extra fee. To me, it's just worth it. And I will add this in. Um, of the things that I've sold over the past, since the season has started back up again, I noticed that there's been a lot and lot of new buyers. Those new buyers, I would say with under 50 feedback, most under 30 and a lot under 10, they're great and they pay right away. And that's just a climate that we're in now. So that's how my listing summary is going to go. We'll have everything up. The card is now on sale. And I'm going to come back and talk to you about shipping. All right, guys. So you have sold your card. And now all we got to do is pack it up and we're good to go. So I want to tell you my method. It's a little overboard. I will warn you in advance. But so far, so good. Knock wood. There have been no issues. So let's just say it's a regular card say under $250, we're gonna ship it off. Okay, here is the sports card investigators process. First, tools of the trade. We need scotch tape, packing tape, painter's tape, very important, painter's tape, scissors, and I am not endorsed nor sponsored by this company, but I love their sleeves. And it's the graded card PSA size resealable sleeves. And I'll put this all on the, um, the page. Also, depending on the card and the price, sometimes I will use these Ultra Pro sleeves. If you can see those or not, I'll put those up there too, as a double protection, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is we get the beautiful card. We then take the graded there from collectsaveprotect.com, um, in case you guys are interested. We put the card into the sleeve. And what I do is you always put it in face forward so it then affixes behind. There we go. Now for a card like this, I'd be setting it in a priority box, which is this. But for this exercise, we're not going to use a box, we're going to use a bubble mailer. So we have it in our first seal, and because it is a better card, better, more expensive, we're gonna put it in a second layer of seal. Same way. And it is sealed, double plastic protected. Then we have our very important pieces of cardboard. And now we're going to put those, make a sandwich, make a Zion graded card sandwich. We're gonna put those down like that, so he's together. Then we get our painter's tape. Now, don't be shy with the painter's tape. How I usually do it is, I'll put the tape down like this. I'll then pick it up, make sure my cardboard is correctly centered. So we got that. Then I will take another longer piece of tape, place it down like so, around and around, and we're good. Okay, we're good to go. But wait, there's more. I always will print out an invoice when I'm doing my eBay. That serves two things. The first thing is it just gives me a chance to, again, tell the person thank you, as well as maybe write a personal note, 
So thank you very much. Enjoy the card, right? But then I take my graded card and I then place it in on the invoice. And then I wrap the card in the invoice, like so. I then take my tape, and I seal it up in the invoice. Overkill, possibly, peace of mind for someone like me who's OCD, definitely. So now we have our card perfectly wrapped. Now, we take the bubble mailer, and then we place it in the bubble mailer, like so. We then, oh, one important thing, I always would recommend too, guys, when you are take advantage of eBay's um, uh, postage, prepaid postage, do that. Use these. These are self. If you have a regular printer or a label maker, whatever you guys do better, you know, you save on postage. And also, these will self fit fix to the um, bubble mailer, like so. Take out our card. We missed a step. So now it's ready to go. We then put the card inside and we seal the bubble mailer. Now I like using these plastic bubble mailers because they're waterproof. They seem to be a little bit better than the, the uh, paper ones, but we're not done quite yet. We then take the tape, get a nice piece of tape, and we then take the tape and seal the bubble mailer even better. And I make sure that it's firm, it's complete, and what that does too is if you do up to the top, which I'll show you what I'm talking about, of course the tape doesn't want to cooperate. If you tape at the very, very top where you can see there's a gap, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little gap. You take that here, put it across, Make sure that's done. Do it on the other side, and that will give it a waterproof seal. Okay? So then, we are good to go. Now there's other things too that you can look at. If I'm gonna be sending in a box, I'll use it. I'll wrap it in bubble mailer. Sometimes I will take a smaller bubble mailer like this. You can order these, and then that will go inside the box. Or you can actually put this inside the bubble mailer inside the big bubble mailer and you even have more protection but so far i have not had any issues knock wood if you follow those simple plans on packaging and sending i don't think you'll have any problem at all hi guys well i hope you got something out of that i thought it was important that i put it out as i was getting a lot of questions about what i do specifically for my ebay listings and some other things around ebay too that maybe we'll touch on at another another episode. But let's do a quick recap. And as I think you could see, my crack producer at Ty Eisman is putting the um, slides up now. So let's just do a quick run through. On the photos, we have the light box and all this stuff will be in the description as far as the stuff that I'm using. We have the light box. We talked about the PSA acrylic stand. We talked about the portrait mode of the iPhone, which I really like and think it really gives off the best picture. It does take a little bit of playing with, but you'll get the best results. How we crop the photo, and then we do the touch-ups as appropriate. On the listing itself, in the description, make sure that you use as many characters as you can 
and be as specific as possible on the description. You are limited to 80 characters, but do, just do what you can. The item, eBay item specifics. You can see they're all up there. Guys, I can't stress enough. Fill out everything you possibly can because you want to attract the most buyers that want to look at that card. And by the most specifics in there, every word counts. Trust me. And put that certification number in there because people will check the certification and make sure that it's a real number. They have been faked. In fact, in my next YouTube episode, I'm going to talk about scams and frauds. Something that I think you guys have to be aware of. On the eBay description, there it is. Feel free to use this. I have no problem with that. Take parts of it. Take all of it. Take whatever you guys think. This is what I use. And you'll see I put the flat rate box up there because it adds a little bit more to it. But you could just take that out and put in the U.S. Postal Service first class shipping. The eBay pricing. Make sure, well, you again, this is what I do. But I put in the starting bit of 99 cents. I do a duration of one day. And that has served me very well. Just think about this. Um, Dame Lillard, right? Um, we put it up for one day. Let's say we put him up. Um, the day after he scored his 50 points, we ended that next day. He jumped almost $500 in one day. So we want to capitalize on those kind of bumps. Offers, I take no offers. I have no reserve price. Starting schedule time, always between 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern. If you're on the West Coast, you can go about it later. That's up to you. But I've had the most success between 7 and 9 p.m. Buy it now. I do not allow buy it now. So so i hope you got something out of it um i am seeing a lot of questions about ebay on the different discord channels um in fact today before i came down there was a question someone was worried because they had an expensive card up there and i believe there was like five or six hours left and it was like 15 dollars, and he thought the card was going to go for like three or four hundred and i told him uh do not worry in the last 30 seconds is magic time. That's when you're going to have the most uh, bang for your buck. So that's very typical. People are going to snipe it at the end. No worries there. Um, you are going to have a lot of buyers competing for your items. And that will just happen later. Anyway, again, hope you got something out of it. Hope you thought it was informative. I love doing it. And until next time, take care.